Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and um, I just thought I'd put out a very, very fast video, short and dirty. It's on a new paper that came out called Warning of a Forthcoming Collapse of the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, or the AMOC. So I've often talked about tipping points in the climate system, you know, which ones will reach first, for example, complete loss of Arctic sea ice in summers, collapse of the um, Amazon uh, rainforest, you know, you can add on, uh, you know, uh, collapse of boreal forests uh, from wildfires. Um, but, you know, we've often, um, we we're, there, there's a big concern that the ocean uh, circulation patterns can just completely rewire. In other words, the AMOC can shut off and this would have huge implications on climate. It would cause utter mayhem around the world. So a paper just came out, um, like I said, uh, a few days ago, and it says that the risk of this uh, AMOC tipping or collapse is much higher than people thought. So the latest IPCC report said the risk is very, very low of the AMOC shutting off this century. Um, and the new work is a statistical study, and it shows that the um, AMOC could very well stop uh, anywhere between 2025 and 2090, 2095, I believe, with a mean uh, time of about 2050. And that's with a 95% probability. So let's have a look at that paper um, just very, very quickly. Okay, so so this is, the, um, this is open source. It's a peer-reviewed uh, paper. So the AMOC, of course, is... You know, it's a major tipping element in the climate system. A future collapse would have severe impacts on the climate in the North Atlantic. Um, and it has been weakening. Circulation has been weakening in recent years. But the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, based on their CMIP models, the Climate Model Intercomparison Project, the simulations, they suggest a full collapse is unlikely uh, by 2100. So tipping to an undesired state in the climate is a growing concern, of course, with our increased greenhouse gas concentrations. And the, if you look at the observations of what the AMOC is doing, um, there's early warning signs and signals in the statistics um, that basically there's an increase in the swings, an increase in the highs and lows in the variance. And that generally means a loss of resilience of a system. And there's also what is called an increased autocorrelation or a critical slowing down, if you like. So the frequencies of the oscillations is slowing down. So this is also being seen in the data for the AMOC. And I'll show you this data. Um, so it's a very, very, you know, big concern. So I highly recommend that you, you know, have a look at this paper. Now, there's a lot of math in this paper to do the calculations and so on. And I'm just gonna show you the results. So this is the area of concern right here. This is an area south of Greenland. Often it's an area where there's a global warming hole. And I've often said that it's because if the AMOC is slowing down, then that heat is not being transferred there. So we would expect it to be anomalously cold in this region. Okay, so this is uh, December, 2020, sea surface temperatures um you know how the how they vary with latitude and this is the region of interest it's called the subpolar gyre um so this is the sea surface temperature in the gyre uh over time and this is the global mean temperature and of course you can see the seasonal variation the um subpolar gyre um temperature anomaly this is it over time this is from the 1880 to 20 or, or you know 18 what uh 1860 i guess or 1850 to present day um and you can see um the there is a um this is the temperature anomaly and you can see when i say that the there, there's high frequency variations up very very sharp fine up and down lines and here you know you can see the peaks much wider the dips are wider. This is that critical slowing down in frequency I'm talking about. This is the global mean temperature anomalies of the 
you know, uh, in, in the ocean. And this is the AMOC fingerprint, if you like. This, this is a fingerprint showing the AMOC. And you can see, again, the lines going up and down very quickly and then slowing down. Broad peak here, broad dip here, broad, you know, broader peak here. You can see these are high frequency oscillations. Okay, so in time, they're peaks that are very close together. These are low frequency oscillations here. And also you can see the excursion is increasing. So a long dip down, a high, high dip up and so on. Long dip down, high dip up. So, th so this, if just looking at this, you can see that the frequencies are slowing down. So the autocorrelation will be higher. Um, and you can also see the excursions are bigger. So the system is losing resilient. So they did a, basically a statistical analysis. Um, they looked at uh, the flow of water in uh, sphere drops, uh, North, uh, North Atlantic deep water, and uh, all these different models and so on. And they looked at the putting fresh water up into the northern region can stop the AMOC. So they looked at the uh, phase transitions, the sharp changes of, of, of flow um, that can result uh, for freshwater hosing, if you like. So let's have a look. Uh, so there's lots of statistics of these bifurcation points or splitting points, and I'm not going to go into all of those uh, details. Uh, but basically, the net. Okay, so this is a, this is kind of key. So the sea surface temperature anomaly, um, and this is uh, on the same time scale as before, is shown here. This is the same data shown again, and this is where it can basically drop off. Um, if you look at the variance, uh, that's the, the, the rise and the fall, the magnitude of the rise and fall, the variance is increasing. And the autocorrelation is increasing. That's the critical slowing down. That's these, the peaks and troughs are, are, are wider. They're not as sharply defined. And then you can look here, uh, there's some statistics here. And this is the key factor here. This is the, um, this is a metric showing that the AMOC is dropping, dropping, dropping. And the best, uh, the best guess would be about 2050, 2055, when the AMOC shuts down. Um, but it could happen as soon as uh, 2025. Um, here, th so this is a histogram. So it could happen at 2025 all the way up. You know, it's got a 95% ch chance of happening between 2025 and 2095. So we predict with high confidence the tipping to happen as soon as mid-century. So 2025 to 2095 is a 95% confidence range, which is very, very high. So this, uh, the IPCC uh, science is already uh, out of date. And you can see there's histograms of the probability distribution function. So non-zero probability of it happening in 2025 you know, the more likely is 20, just after 2050. Uh, but the, it's got a 95% probability of happening before, uh, you know, in that period, 2025 to 2095. Okay, so um, this is a very, very key uh, finding. Okay, the AMOC uh, fingerprint, if you like, or the metric. So there's lots of data here, uh, but that's the key factor. So the Guardian article that said it could happen in 2025, yeah, but that's not a very good title. Okay, but this is very a very significant paper. So let, how significant? Let's have a look at what um, Stefan Ramsdorf has been saying about it. So he tweeted out a bunch of stuff, but I'll look at his um, his article here. What's happening in the Atlantic Ocean to the AMOC? Okay, so lots of noise, lots of press, lots of mainstream press. You know, here is the uh, Gulf Stream coming across um, and uh, descending. It descends to the bottom of the ocean floor and comes back this way. Okay, so this is a whole. This is the ocean circulation pattern. So they're looking at this region, and this is the temp sea surface temperature trend between 1993 and 2021. So the ocean's much warmer overall, but there's this area here which is which has been cooling over this time period. If you like the global warming hole, so the AMOC, of course, is a big deal for climate. Okay, um, it's driven by density differences, uh, you know, pressure, 
and temperature, uh, temperature of water, salinity concentration of water. Those two factors determine the density of the water. You know, uh, there's a huge amount of water. Um, the AMOC is a large scale overturning motion of the entire Atlantic from the Southern Ocean to the high north. It moves around 15 million cubic meters of water per second. That's 15 sphere drop. A sphere drop is a million cubic meters of water per second. So it's very important for transporting heat. There's been major stabilities in Earth history. Um, it's weakened over the past hundred years. Um, okay, um, it's weaker now than at any time in the past millennium. Okay, so there's data showing that. Um, the the long-term weakening trend is anthropogenic, human caused, and it's a tipping point. It has a tipping point, but we don't know where it is. But then this recent study is showing um, that it can tip. This is uh, the simulations are under simulating this cold area. Um, and uh, basically, um, yeah, so I basically the timing's uncertain. Um, the risk is far greater than 10% during this century of, of it tipping. And uh, there's loads and loads of uh, press on it. So I just wanted to uh, bring that up quickly. Um, and there's a, there's this art, this uh, in terms of climate tipping points, there's this great um, OECD article. And I just want to have a look at a couple things here to finish up. I'll probably go over this in great detail. But this is a bunch of tipping points. So you can see the Atlantic overturning. It's connected to so many other tipping points. We've talked about the loss of Arctic sea ice being a tipping point. We've talked about the Amazon rainforest. You know, which one will happen first? Of course, the, the Atlantic overturning is connected to everything. So if this tips, if this slows down, um, and the latest uh, report paper is showing it's got a 95% chance of that happening between 2025 and 2095, then we're in uh, deep trouble. Okay, thanks for listening and bye for now.